I made a list of uh, actually the videos, but I forgot the documents, so I picked some of them that I could remember. As you can see in YouTube, there are lots of them, and there are more ones like I think it's mostly for the European Central Bank. The, they have a really good videos if for the European how the eurozone works, how this works, how that works. I think it's because more complicated. They would like to have more videos about this. So you can also check in your free time instead of watching medjizish maybe. Vallahi bilmiyorum hepsini biliyorsun. Ratingleri bile biliyorsun. İsmi neydi? Yeton. Ha? Yeton. Yeton. Sen Yeton sen misin? tamam. Nerelisin sen? Kosova. Kosova tamam. Merak ediyordum kim olduğunu. Da o yüzden isim ilginç oluyor. Senin kim olduğunu merak ediyordum. Önce bulduk. ama Jeton diye yazılmıyor mu? Ama Yeton diye okunuyor. Tamam. <gülüyor> Yok, adını neyse onu söyleyeyim. <gülüyor> yani ismi hiç doğru düzgün söylenemeyen bir insan olarak her zaman bazak, basak, o yüzden yani adını neyse onu söyleyelim. Yetonsa, yeton. Ee, unuttum ne diyecektik. Medcezir, evet. <gülüyor> If you don't want to watch Medcezir, the t- Turkish TV series, and instead you would like to spend your time on YouTube watching lots of EU documentaries, You're more than welcome to do so. And um, there, there are a couple of them that I picked that I think it's, it's, it's nice to have a look. And now we can discuss a bit more afterwards about those. And one other issue about the exam maybe I should mention, whether or not the exam is going to be about more on the theoretical side or more the technical side of things, it's actually going to be both. I'm not going to be asking in details how many votes the UK has or whatever. I mean, obviously, these are for your information only. I'm not expecting you to remember those things, so don't get lost in the details, try to see the bigger picture. And that's the reason why I'm trying to give the examples about the discussions about the negotiations, this and that, or those specific examples are trying to give you the general bigger picture. Uh, so that's what I'm asking about. You obviously have to mix the theoretical discussions into the technical details, but you should be able to give the bigger picture and how this institutional framework works and what are the relations between these institutional frameworks. And obviously, when you're ma- giving your discussion about these issues, you should be able to reflect on the certain issues that we discuss here. So, combining the readings plus whatever discussed here, this and that. But the better you can do all these things, uh, that you don't necessarily with blue points These are the roles of the commission, this, this, this, this, and, and that. The president is elected. That's why I didn't even mention how many years the president has been elected, because I realized that you s- somehow try to remember those things much better than the, the, the, the real thing, the real picture. Uh, so that's why I don't even mention that it's been elected every five years. Somehow you remember that, but you don't even remember what the president does. Uh, so that's more important. That what's the role of the president, why it's no longer a rotating presidency, this and that, the whole mentality behind it is more important than those technical details. I can even give you how much he, the, the number he earns. He earns about 300,000 euros, but I'm pretty sure somebody will remember it in the exam and will write it down. 300,000 euros, Ramfi earns, blah, blah, blah. That's not an information for you to remember. It's not important, it's not significant. It just tells you about some kind of a background information that you will have an idea about um, why ex-prime ministers become a president of the a Council of the European Union, basically. They have to have some kind of motivation behind it in their retirement. Uh, so, as we talked about the president of the European Council, let's start seeing this first. I mean, obviously it says 28, 7, but now it's 28, obviously.
It's the Mississippi SB basically. I don't know why it's blurred, it's not clear. It represents the U Union. And the, the other one was, I think, Barroso, I'm assuming. <coughs> And that's the president. And one other thing about anything on the internet that you would be watching or reading or any documents that you would be reading, make sure that you're reading the up -to -date, updated information. Because what you have the risk is the EU is such an evolving process that everything is changing all the time. Even myself, I have to update myself every year regarding this course because something might have changed especially Lisbon, before Lisbon, after Lisbon is kind of critical. Like I'll just show you something as an example. This is the consul or the consilium. Uh, but as you can see, that they will be giving information which is not valid any longer, like the rotating presidency. So be careful to check on the information that you get is updated, that you are not actually getting the information that's no longer valid. Let's have a look at this one, and you will see what I mean. This is what I mean. That's what I mean. So it's no longer uh, the presence of the council is no longer rotating. So don't make that mistake if you're trying to get some information. So that's why it's the best if you're getting any kind of information or watching a video, this and that, try to get the most updated one, usually from the official websites. So the official, you know, the, the official, you know, the videos, images will be more valid. So just keep in mind, something like this can be uh, uh, updated. Or even within the EU's official websites as well, sometimes, like I, I was able to see that there was one page that was saying that Romania and Bulgaria is going to be joining soon, which has been God knows how many years now. Uh, but still, they, they haven't updated it. So it was saying that the Romania and Bulgaria is still going to be joining soon. So just be careful about this information, especially if you are going to be getting information um, about if you're going to apply for a job or something, if you're preparing a, a, a report or something, just be, be careful and keep it in mind. And this is about the uh, Council of Ministers. And let's see. The councils are uh, the main uh, legislative. Uh, Sorry. Uh, it is kind of the house of 27 member states. It's where ministers meet from each country. And the Council of uh, Ministers meets in various formations. And in each case, the ministers that are responsible for specific fields take part. And when compromise is made on the basis of a proposition from the Commission, then we will negotiate with the European Parliament. Our role, my role as President of the Council, is more of a, a facilitator, a mediator. Our aim is to uh, reach consensus. It is a challenge. Uh, you're chairing a meeting in another language, and uh, some of the issues that we are debating are of a very complex nature. The most difficult part is what, uh, what is required before you sit uh, at the table. So good preparation uh, is essential. You have a personal contact with each member of the council, knowing the background of uh, each one's position is important. So you get to know the whys and the what. I think it's very important that you can hear what other people say, that, that you really listen, not just, you know, give them the floor and say thank you, but that you really listen. Understand? It's like the EU doesn't work very efficiently. Something happened.
Ah, internet is slow. Mm, I blame the EU, it was our internet. I think the I like the... Mm, Do you see the monster? Uh, decisions in the European There's been a lot of, of fuss and worry and debate about uh, Europe in general, but Europe is also working. We can take decisions. We can throw light on. Uh, uh. Let's wait for a minute. Like the internet is slow. We can throw light on of the way that uh, some financial products are traded. Uh, we can make sure that we handle a uh, foreign policy situation. Uh, we can be in, in farming and agriculture and environment and climate, uh, energy efficiency. We're taking a decision this will be better for the citizens in the future. Because it's important that the union work, no matter the crisis, no matter the debates about how Europe is in, in, in the global standard. So it discusses how you have to be prepared before the council meeting, as you, you noticed, and it's also about personal contacts as well. So basically you discuss certain things probably at the coffee break, uh, and you decide on things at the coffee break and lunch or, I don't know, going for a drink after the meeting is over for the next meeting and this and that. So this is how the informal part of things are actually working. One more um, thing, um, let's see, the General Affairs Council. You will remember that we discussed about the different consuls, and this is a General Affairs and External, Relation, uh, external Affairs Council meeting. And depending on the subject matter, different subject issues are being discussed. So let's have a look what they, dis what they usually discuss at um, the General Affairs Council. The General Affairs Council will focus on preparations for it's the for next today. summit of EU leaders in Brussels, with climate and energy set to top the agenda. The main objective of the summit of the European Council is to reach agreement on the outlines of the EU's climate and energy policy through to the year 2030. The Union stands at the forefront of international efforts to combat global warming. The policy will address greenhouse gas emissions targets, the state of the emissions trading system, energy efficiency, renewable energy sources and energy security. The leaders will also discuss the state of the economy based on a presentation by the European Commission and preliminary work completed in this General Affairs Council. Issues of international concern like the Ebola crisis are likely to be debated. In a follow-up to the last summit of EU leaders in June, the ministers will also exchange views on the topics of freedom, security and justice at this General Affairs Council in Luxembourg. So as you can see in the General Affairs Council, the, the, the scope is very broad. They discuss about various issues from climate, it was from today. Work in West Africa, helping to keep people alive. Okay, uh, there were like 45 views by the way. Uh, you had one about compared to uh, apparently Medjezir had 350,000 views. Uh, not everybody's interested in what is the agenda on the General Affairs Council. Uh, there are only 45 people, including myself in that 45, uh, that checked on uh, the General Affairs Council agenda. So, as you can see in the General Affairs, it's the General Affairs, so it's from Ebola to global warming to various other issues that are involved in the, that, that they come together and today they discussed about these issues. And one of them was uh, how, to com how to deal with uh, Ebola. Maybe it's an important thing, just we look briefly, like how on a specific issue matter, the council actually gets into the action. The virus from spreading in their community, but also throughout the region. According to the World Health Organization, some 9,000 cases have been recorded in seven countries up to mid-October. Around half the people who contracted the disease have died so far. 
The front line against Ebola is clearly drawn in West Africa, and the European Union is focusing its efforts there. The EU and its member states are sending humanitarian aid, around half a billion euros in backing for medical care, containing the virus, and government support, as well as helping to coordinate international efforts to fight the disease. But the efforts are taking time to gather steam, and for the health agencies and NGOs struggling to cope, time is of the essence. The speed of the response is too slow. Actually, we could say that the speed, of the, the increase of uh, the number of cases and the epidemic go faster than the, the, the speed of the deployment. And that's still an issue. I mean, time is an issue. Again, we have to think about this fight like a, like a war. And, uh, and we need to put the necessary uh, means and activities as soon as possible, and we have no time to Experts say that Europe is safe from Ebola. The risk of it spreading is low, given the strength of European health systems compared to those in Africa. But one case of secondary infection has been found in a health worker. At a meeting in Brussels, health ministers and senior officials have been looking at ways to better monitor the disease. Most agree that the screening of airline passengers should be boosted in airports in countries like Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone before they fly out for EU airports. La prima cosa che è emersa è la necessità di rafforzare i controlli di uscita. The first thing is to reinforce exit controls in the countries affected and also to ensure that people cannot travel within 20 or 21 days after coming into contact with an infected person. The second important thing is to record these movements and eventually to create a database to be able to follow the movements of persons coming from West Africa into the European Union during the virus's 21-day incubation period. Beyond tackling Ebola before it moves, the EU is also looking to bolster their health systems in the countries most affected. Under the weight of the disease, treatment for other common illnesses like malaria and measles is also suffering to help. An EU package of 140 million euros in funding to reinforce treatment centers and provide support for health workers has also just been announced. Ebola can be beaten. Nigeria is Africa's good news story. Strong action, contact tracing to find people who have been in touch with those infected, and a highly organized and methodical mm -hmm. approach have proved to be the answer. <laughs> I mean, it's something to be proud of, to be honest, and congratulate. It's an incredibly deadly virus and um, difficult to have a cure because it kills so quickly that before you can even like create treatment, before the time has, you're dead, you're gone. So that's why it's very tricky, it's very difficult, uh, and it's very contagious as well, so it can spread very quickly. As one thing you, you probably notice that they're more focused on how it's going to be spreading to Europe rather than how can we deal with it. Like, uh, like it's not about the cure, it's not about, uh, there are two sides of things. On the, on the council meeting uh, that they were discussing, it's not going to spread to EU, so one thing, but we have to also be able to deal with the secondary spread as well, that how can we deal with it. But on the other hand, you listen to the um, Medicine Sans Frontiers uh, doctor, the response is not quick enough. So there are two different, as you can imagine, like there are two different views involved in this. On one hand, Medicine Sans Frontiers, obviously he's in the field and he's dealing with day-to-day -day basis uh, with the issues relating to the virus, how it's spreading, how they need help in terms of medicine, medication, the, the, the, the the people who are actually going to be there, the staff, basically, the facilities, etc. That's the NGO part of things. On the other hand, the external action service of the EU is providing them the aid so that they can actually deal with, uh, with that issue. But on the other hand, the discussions are held at Brussels. They're more involved in uh, the spread of the virus in terms of uh, a security issue regarding the EU. So as you can see, at different levels, different interests are rep being represented. So that's going to be reflected in the, in the council meetings as well. So I hope you were able to get it. I don't know if you were, but um, that's also representing that. I mean, that wasn't their point, but uh, without knowing it, I think that also represents how 
these issues are being dealt with. I would recommend to Google the Swedish, I don't know if you know, Ministry of Health, the recent one. Sorry, do we know that? I was watching the, listening to the, I think the Italian Ministry of Health. I suddenly realized that, ha, huh, the Swedish one probably is on one of those meetings as well. Um, so. And let's have a look now. Um, this one. So as you can see, I'm not going to go into details because there is lots of them. I mean, obviously, if you're very interested, you can go and have a look at yourself. But at least you can understand that how subject matter is different. The Foreign Affairs Council dealing with the foreign affairs issues. Um, you can see mostly um, the issues relating to foreign affairs. ECOFIN or Eurozone meetings. So the ECOFIN uh, Council meetings that they come together and discuss issues about economy and finance. Um, the agricultures and fisheries, there are some fish involved in this, obviously, and also uh, with third countries. Uh, let's have a look, for example, this ECOFIN Council preview. And one fisheries, then, it's the July one. The European Union's incoming Italian presidency hosts its first council on July 8th as economics and finance ministers meet in Brussels. Italy will present its economic policy work program for the next six months, which focuses on structural reforms and investments in growth and jobs. Other priorities will be financial services and completing the banking union structure, aimed at better protecting banks and credit institutions to avoid future financial crises. Taxation too is on Italy's agenda, including value-added tax and the exchange of information between national tax administrations. During this council, attention will turn to negotiations with Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Andorra, Monaco and San Marino on upgrading their savings taxation agreements with the EU. The aim is to bring their reports up to date in line with new products and developments in investment behaviour since the last rules came to force in 2005. Ministers will also debate the EU 2020 strategy on smart, sustainable and inclusive economic growth as it comes up for midterm review. Well, I was trying to say that, first of all, Italy, I mean, in July till December, well, holds the presidency, so how they get prepared. And as every member state has a different priority, as I mentioned with the European Council, Obviously, with the current situation, uh, the economic situation in Italy, and how things have changed in Italy in the recent years, their focus is on economy. So they're more interested in economy, how we can deal with the, the, the crisis, how we can have like certain reforms in terms of taxation, this and that. So Italy, being the president, thinks that there are certain policy issues that would like to push in the agenda. So they're using their presidency, uh, trying to at least get the attention of the other member states on that kind of policy topics. So every presidency will usually do that. Uh, for Italy, it's economy that's critical and important. For another ministry, or for another uh, uh, member state, for the presidency, another topic would be important. So they will set up the issues that I would like to address during their presidency. It might work, it might not work. That's a different thing. But at least, uh, they will be trying to promote those issues or try to raise attention to those issues during their presidency for that six months. They're at the stage, uh, the spotlights are on them, so they can actually slightly uh, shape the discussion. Did you have a question? Sorry? The presidency thing is not gone. No. What is gone, what I meant is that the president of the presidency was rotating. Previously, let's make it clear, previously the, the head of the, like, the Italian prime minister was going to be the president of the council. But six months later, it's going to be Latvia. So it's going to be Latvian's prime minister will be the president of the council. They get rid of this. Because every six months, I mean, the president, uh, it's gonna, he's going to be the president 
of the, pre uh, the consul, but he has like 10,000 other things he has to deal with. He has to run the country, first of all. And presidency of the European, like the Council of the European Union, the European Council, is one extra nice thing that like once in a while they will go and attend the meeting. So it doesn't create the conti uh, continuity. So that's why they had to get rid of this president position being held by the Italian prime minister. Uh, so now they have a permanent president, Rompi. So he's going to be there for two and a half years and then it's going to be relieved. So it's five years. I mean, unless he does something, you know, terrible, uh, which is unlikely. So at least there is a continuity of the president as a, as a, as a symbolic figure and who's also running the show, basically. I'm fine if you have to explain it in that way. But presidency, that's different, president versus presidency. Presidency is still rotating. So every six months, when I said go and check the, ti uh, the timetable, it's still rotating. The presidency is rotating, but not the president. So in the, uh, in the exactly. But they tried to work together in this 18 month period that, that's called, uh, I didn't mention it, trio, which means the former presidency, the current presidency, and the future presidency they collaborate with each other so that the topic matters or the issues that they raise during their presidency are at least going to be followed up. So there is going to be a more of a continuous process. So, but I mean, you might discuss how continuous this is, if it's that like working as it's set idealistically, that's a different discussion matter that we have to look behind the scenes to see whether or not that's actually being done. One other thing, and let's, this is the, the summit. So this is the European Council summit now. We move to the summit. We try to move to the summit at least. Et pour 
ceux qui n'ont pas accès au sommet, les médias sociaux ont désormais pris le relais, notamment hashtag Eco sur Twitter. Vous pouvez suivre quasiment en direct l'avancée des discussions sans être à l'intérieur de ce bâtiment. À propos du bâtiment, justement, jusqu'ici les chefs d'État se réunissaient dans cet édifice de juste luxe. Mais à terme, tout devrait se dérouler dans ce nouveau bâtiment de construction, toujours au cœur du quartier européen, à Bruxelles. Did you get it? I guess so. I should have shown this before. It, might, it would have made my life much easier, uh, I guess. So I told you about like how the summits worked, where the whole idea came from, and how everything is done behind the scenes, and the discussions are presented, and now it's much easier with the social media, but we also noticed how, how popular it is with four to five, uh, you know, current views on YouTube and not everything is as popular as is expected uh, but at least gives you uh, the general idea how the summit is done with heads of governments, heads of states, how this is discussed and this and that. On the other hand, how specific councils that the, the ministers come together and discuss certain issues and this is how the division of labor is done in the hierarchical setting that we discussed um, earlier. Uh, how on the very, very top part, we have the Council, uh, European Council, which is the summit, which every six months that we have, that there is a presidency, I'm clarifying it again, but the, the president is no longer rotating with the member states. It's now constant. Who's elected um, accordingly. But the support for the specific councils are done through Coraper, and it also has a division of labor, depending on the subject matter, Coraper 1 and Coraper 2. But they also get the help of the working groups. But sometimes, and I'm telling you, not always the relations can be smooth between the Coraper and the working group. Sometimes the Coraper may not take into consideration of the, the, the, the report or the decision or the opinion that the working group prepares. They might think that they're looking at the bigger picture and they can take a sense of that. So there's also a delicate balance between that relationship. And the secretariat helps in the direction. And over time, it becomes more important as well. The secretariat of the, um, the council becomes more important nowadays. And they're even slightly getting a more political role of trying to uh, become um, a more kind of a negotiator between uh, certain uh, member states. And they also involve people who are translating all the documentation that's been prepared. So that everything that's been, uh, that's, that's been accepted has to be translated to all the official languages of the European Union. So they also have stuff that's translating. Uh, but their role is getting more and more important over time. Um, so this is, uh, this is a general setting of the, the, the Council of the European Union and also the other institution, the separate institution, the European Council. Uh, they have an intergovernmental framework and some might argue that although they're uh, representing the member states' interests and it's intergovernmental, still uh, they act in a more supranational setting, which makes uh, the relationship between supranationality and intergovernmental, uh, intergovernmentality a bit more intricate and a bit more complicated. And it's not as simple as it was before that we simplif sim simplify European Commission in uh, supranational council into governmental and parliament supranational. We discussed in the commission that there is comitology, that member states' interests are represented as well in the European Commission. That makes it a bit more complicated in terms of its uh, general framework. Same thing is valid for the Council of the European Union, though it, there, the more uh, general interests of the member states are represented through the systems like permanent representations. We can also say that it has slight supranational connotations because like in the European Council meetings, um, there are also more directions of the European in integration process are being decided accordingly. It's a summary of the whole two uh, classes combined together. Any questions, comments, anything that is not very clear? Perfect, everything's so perfect. 
Okay then, uh, see you next week with the European Parliament. Thank you.